So James Gunn has decided to reboot the DCEU. It is all but confirmed via multiple sources. He has fucked around a icon, an icon in Henry Cavill, and he's keeping on criminals like Ezra Miller, which is a real, says everything we need to know really. Ezra Miller identifies as some sort of attack helicopter or something. I don't know what he identifies as, but apparently that makes him some sort of protected protected status. But Henry Cavill, a fantastic citizen and a fantastic actor and a fantastic man, has been let go. And the apparent reason for this is that they are looking, James Gunn is looking to go for a much younger and fresher look for the DCEU. Now, I think I can speak on behalf of every single Superman fan when I say we are bored of young Superman. We've seen young Superman. We're done with it. It's over. Move on. I understand you want to put your mark on the Superman and you want to put your mark on the DCEU, but I don't understand why you have to start fresh when I don't really think that's necessary. What I want to see, and I think what a lot of people want to see, is an old Superman. I want to see Superman after Lois is dead. I want to see Superman in his, you know, human 60s, 70s. I want to see an old Superman and I want to see how he adjusts. How, you know, does he become resentful of Earth because it took away Lois and it took away everyone he loves and his mother. And that's what I want to see. I want to see once, you know, Batman's retired or Batman's dead and all of these human human superheroes or vigilantes are gone. I want to see how Superman responds to that. I think that would be really interesting and it's something that's not been explored in the cinematic universe. And it's a real fucking shame we're going to have to sit here and wait for another 20 years to see something like that happen. We've seen it. Smallville, we've seen young Superman. We've seen him go from being a little boy to getting his powers. And it was quite boring, to be honest. It's not Superman, it's Clark Kent. And, it all, and, and this, this comes down to another thing. This is the problem. I don't think James Gunn actually has any fucking idea what he's doing. I don't think he knows what he's doing. I think he's been given this entire universe and he is in over his head. Now, based on his filmography, a lot of the films he's done have been extremely left-leaning and woke. And I've said it many times in my videos, I hate getting political with videos. I want to just be entertained with TV shows and movies. But he has created the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, movies, which again, they've done very well. Uh, he did Peacemaker, let's, let's not speak about that. Suicide Squad in 2021, that was all right. And apart from that, it's been just, just just woke shit after woke shit after woke shit. And it's a real shame. Because apart from, you know, the Dawn of the Dead in 2004, which is a decent film, he has done some very weird and controversial things like James Gunn's PG porn, which is basically a, a porn parody, including the talents of like, you know, Sasha Gray and things like that, which is a bit weird. Uh, he's just a very strange man in general, and I don't really think he is the sort of person you want running an entire universe. You know, a, a film or two, fine, but why on earth is he running the entire universe? It, it's not. It's not good. It, it's not looking very, very good for us. Um, and as a diehard DC fan of fifteen plus years, I'd say I've been a bat. Yeah, I mean, Batman's been my favorite superhero for God knows how many years, and Superman's pretty probably right up there it, it's just a shame um the only saving grace i've seen is that bane will be introduced into one of the batman films but the batman films may not even be linked into the dceu robert pattinson's batman which was a pretty pretty decent film may not even be introduced into the dceu so the one positive thing which was bane which was linked to be batista dave batista or hafiel bjornson which plays the mountain in game of thrones um, isn't even going to be in the DCEU. And Dave Batista has already said that he's too old for it, which I agree. He's not, you know, Prime Batista would have been perfect. You know, when he was in the WWE and he was in Raw, that would have been the per perfect moment for Batista to be Bane. He was an absolute monster. He was a freak of nature at that size. He was sort of like, you know, he was like a, he was like a Latino Brock Lesnar. But I think, I think Thor, the mountain, is perfect. He's about six foot nine, six foot ten very well built familiar with wearing uniform you know costumes and wearing heavy costumes and masks and uncomfortable equipment with you know with the mountain so he doesn't need a lot of screen time 
the only problem is that I don't know the reason that Bane worked so well with Tom Hardy was that Tom Hardy is not only a fantastic look for Bane, his acting chops. Bane was made into an extremely interesting character through Tom Hardy's articulation of his persona. I don't know if Thor has the ability to do that. He's a very big dude, but the whole point of the mountain was that the mountain would just not speak. He was just a big dude that fought. So I don't know if he's got the range. Anyway, I'm rambling on a little bit now. But I'm very concerned as a DC fan to see James Gunn has come in. He's got rid of Henry Cavill. He's got rid of Momoa and... Well, to be fair, Momoa was on the way out anyway. Uh, and Gal Gadot. And he's basically got rid of a lot of the old guard, which we love. And he's keeping the young the younger generation which isn't necessarily a bad thing i think to make a fantastic dceu you need a mixture of both for example you have the old guard of tony stark and you have the young spider-man to have under his wing i think it works very very well that dynamic when they're all young they're all young they're all naive they're all ignorant and they're all inexperienced there's no mentorship there there's nothing i don't know how that would work the whole the whole point of you know, you've got you've got you've got Bruce Wayne with Alfred, a mentor father figure. You know, when you think of the great TV shows, The Walking Dead, Rick and Carl, father figure, mentoring. You know, as I said before, Tony Stark and Spider Man. You've got Ant Man. You've got, I can't remember his name, Michael Douglas and uh, Paul Rudd. You need these relationships in superhero films because otherwise things become extremely, extremely strained, and it's a real shame. Because all they had to do was keep a few of the older generation actors on, like Henry Cavill or Gug. And even then, Henry Cavill was in his 40s. He's not even old. He's, he's middle-aged at best. You know, he's in his late 30s, 40s. So to, to state that he's too old to play Superman is, a, is very stupid. When you've got Ezra Miller, who was okay, and apparently the actor that plays Cyborg. So the two people out of the entire, you know, out of the entire DCEU, the two heroes you're keeping on are the non-binary one and the black one. How do you expect that to look? It's woke as fuck. It's just, I don't understand. And uh, James Gunn hasn't got a fucking clue what he's doing. He has some very strange approaches to things all things film which is fine you know he's an interesting man in order to succeed in that sort of area you have to be a bit nuts you know you have to be a bit insane in order to be able to be that good look at the likes of Heath Ledger probably one of the best actors of all time in my opinion definitely the best Joker of all time up there with Jack Nicholson but he was a very very strained man mentally and you know it takes its toll in order to take in order to to, to leave your body and become someone else as a method actor you need to be able you need to be insane to the point where you are able to step outside of yourself that's not a normal thing to do but yeah he's got some he's dating a woman that's like 20 something years younger than him which is immediately sets off alarm bells as a man in his 50s he's dating a woman in her early 30s it's rather strange and yet that's fine but if henry cavill does it it's a problem you know it's, it's very hypocritical for these people apparently could but, but because james gunn leans left and he's you know he's a leftist no one says a word but henry cavill does it and apparently he's a fucking groomer so just some thoughts based on the things i've seen james gunn is looking to make the dceu younger which is in my opinion a stupid idea that's not what we need we need the opposite i we, we want to see these characters in their twilight years I want to see a bitter Superman. I want to see a resentful Superman, angry at Earth for the death of Lois Lane and and all of the times he's saved Earth and yet he's still treated as an outsider. That's an interesting story. That's what we want to see. Nobody wants to see a young Superman again. And hopefully he learns this because this is the problem with the DCEU. It's been a very, very painful decade as a DC fan, watching the Marvel fans have a, a fantastic phase one two and three phase four with marvel is dog shit but the phase one two and three that's all i want for us I, I would take you know we had a few bright spots over the last decade and that's about it the last movie i can think of that was outstanding the last trilogy was christopher nolan's dark knight trilogy with christian bale that's it apart from that i can't think of any other dc films that were absolutely sensational apart from that and then the man of steel movies um, everything else has been slightly above average or average and it's really painful as a DC fan so hopefully 
there are other DC fans out there that agree with me. But if you do disagree with me, I would like to hear why in the comments below. And I hope you are all doing well. Have a lovely evening. Take care.